My husband is the great, great, great grandson of Tan Kim Singh and I have become the kind of spokesperson for the family simply because I wrote this book on Tan Kim Singh. The family knew very little about him. What we know is what is in the general resources. Other than that, the family knew very little. And when I embarked on the research on him, I didn't think I could find very much. But I was surprised there's so much about him. It was a very interesting story to tell and a story that spans from 1757 when his grandfather came from China to Malacca to the present day. We've always heard from the family oral history that um, the Tan family owned the Gap, Queenstown, so on and so forth, but there wasn't any mark, he didn't have any monument. But when this Hong Hin marker came out, it was a very solid uh, evidence that he once owned the land. I received uh, SMS that uh, there was this Hong Hin marker found in Dover Forest. It was found by our minister Desmond Lee. And I told my husband about it, and he decided to write to the minister to ask him to preserve the Hong Hin marker. Hong Hin is the family company of Tan Kim Singh. This is the company that his grandfather started in Malacca when he first came in from uh, China and uh, the family had been trading under this name for many generations. The Chinese people actually knew it as Hong Hin, but when he started to trade big with the uh, British, he incorporated Kim Sing and Company, and that was what the British knew him by. So Kim Sing and Company and Hong Hin were the same companies. I think Tan Kim Sing's um Cling to fame, to me, it was the, uh, the water fountain story. Since young, you, you, the school talked about this, uh, the money that he donated to uh, have fresh water brought into Singapore. Later on, as I grew up, well, I realised that he has this bridge, the Kim Seng Bridge, and then the road and so on. And uh, his house, uh, Panglima Prang, which is just by the, the River Valley Road area, which is very close to the Kim Seng uh, Bridge area. So that was the extent, to me, uh, the geography of Tan Kim Seng in Singapore. But that was huge enough already. So usually a named stone in Singapore's context uh, would be a boundary marker because it, it marks the owner of the particular or the occupier of the land. The most important uh, is to mark out where somebody's land is, uh, the occupier or the owner's, uh, the extent of the land, precisely or accurately. Otherwise, you will be encroaching on the personal space of the other person. That's why when this marker finally was linked to him, wow, because this is uh, one of the oldest um, personalised, I would say, personalised landlocks in Singapore's uh, maps. And now we have a physical mark, literally a marker, from that piece of land. Yeah. And, it's, and it still survived all these years. But in today's context, uh, the, um, the size of this uh, Tan Kim Singh's land uh, can be uh, visualised using the number of MRT stations along the east-west line. From the east, uh, we have uh, Queenstown, followed by Commonwealth, Buona Vista and Dover. And just before Clementi, uh, it stops at Clementi Avenue too. That's how big, uh, about four and a half MRT uh, stations uh, in, in distance. Next time, upon entering the train on Queenstown, start to look up. It's all Tan Kim Seng's land. <laughs> then you can alight at Clementi and go and eat and buy things. <laughs> I believe um, people would now sort of drive through the Pan Island Expressway and visit the um, university, the hospital, and all that's there, those who study there and work there, have a better interest or, or more interest in what was Singapore in those days, before all these things happened. 